Good afternoon, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Wednesday, August 10th, around 1 p.m. Mountain Time 2022. The volcano in Iceland has been reopened this morning, but the big story. New severe thunderstorm warning in southern Virginia for 1 to 2.5 inch hail and 60 mile per hour wind gusts. So if you're in this area, take shelter now. Keep calm. It's boom time. It looks like these storms are going to explode over I-22, 122, just east, east of North Shore. So heads up in that region. And heavy rains continue after they closed tourist attractions, including Death Valley and parts of J Tree. The flooding continued yesterday. There were videos captured from Caltrans traffic cams looking like some flooding on I-15, a river running down the highway there. It's a lot of rain going on, and that's good news for the Four Corners, and the flood threat continues today. Flood threat for several locations. The active monsoon season will continue the rest of the week, and the flood threat today stretches from Arizona to portions of the Intermontane West. Meanwhile, a humid and moist air ahead of a cold front may result in heavy rain and flooding from the mid-Atlantic to the eastern Ohio and Tennessee valleys. Finally, slow-moving moving storms may produce flooding for the central Gulf Coast states. So there's flood warnings down here for Louisiana and uh, Mississippi. Uh, heat warnings and flood warnings throughout the mid-Atlantic and flood warnings uh, throughout the four corners. So just click on your county to get more information and to be up to speed. Let's walk through the model here. And you can see those pop-up storms here potentially in the Delmarva uh, specifically in Maryland there in Virginia, right on the border. Uh, that's right near the Mason-Dixon line. Also some pop-up storms here in eastern Texas. The nexus of the Schmexus. Nothing else, nothing significant, but we did have that warning cut popping out on, from Virginia for one and a quarter inch hail. And that's just an estimate, so there could be larger hail, obviously, in some places. So heads up there. Now let's take a look at the temperature forecast. There's going to be a heat wave this weekend uh, in the middle of the country. And here we are moving through Wednesday, Thursday. And by Friday, take a look at that, be 101 potentially in Nebraska. Saturday, it's going to heat up 107 in South Dakota, 106 right where South Dakota and Nebraska and Iowa meet. It's going to be very hot there on Saturday. Sunday, the heat's going to move south through the weekend. Sunday, it's going to drop down to southern Iowa, Northern Kansas, southern Nebraska, 108, 106 in Iowa potentially. And then by Monday, it's going to drop further south. All of Kansas will be in the heat, about 104, 102 in Oklahoma by Monday. And that heat drops down into Texas. Look at that, 106 for Tuesday, August 16th in Kansas. So if you live in that small bubble in the center of the U.S., it's going to be hot. It should also be hot in Death Valley um, and in the southern valleys of Cali. So we could see some wildfires popping up. Now, Oklahoma wind turbine is no match for Mother Nature. First responders and storm spotters said there was lightning in the area, and well, it was boom time. And that is your sustainable energy right there, burning the farm uh, that it's not sustaining. Seismic update. No quakes of note. Good news. Look at that. It is quiet. All is quiet on the Western Front. Worldwide volcano news update. Same on the volcano front. Very normal and low activity, except for at Fagradosval Volcano. Now, the eruption site uh, reopened today at 10 o'clock. That was hours ago. But the civil defense decided to reopen the eruption site in Meradalir to the public at 10 local time. Tourists are recommended to use proper hiking equipment and bring, well, a mask. No, more likely a respirator. That'll be the only thing to help you there. Now, the activity at the eruption site is increasing this morning. The height of fountains continues to reach by some lava jets over 100 meters. That's 300 feet for you Americans. It looks that the lava that most of the lava is going directly into the main outlet channel towards the Meradalir Valley. And this is where the old eruption was. And it continues to overlap that 2021 lava flow field. The remaining sheet-like lava is spreading on both sides of the fissure. And we can come check it out live. 
shall we? And we can even get some audio. Not much going on there. What was that there? He looked like he was trying to put out a fire. That was weird. And we can see here how the fissure has now gone from hundreds of meters long to more confined area and is now just concentrated in four little splatter cone areas here. One, two, three, four. Always happens. Someone always calls while I'm making the video. No one calls all day until I make the video. I apologize. So go check out uh, this website, which will be linked below. Subscribe, give them a thumbs up if you want to watch the Fisher eruption in Iceland. Uh, tourists are now allowed back there. You can see some vehicles there just to bring you to scale of the ongoing eruption at Fagrarsval Mountain. Now, Melinda Biddle, thank you, friend of the channel. She's up in Canada. Now, during this recent geomagnetic storm and instability period over the last several days, she's got some photographs from her backyard. And there certainly was aurora in her region. Take a look at that. Pretty good shots for just an amateur photographer. I hope she's an amateur. <laughs> that is a fantastic shot of the aurora. And some jets or sprites there. Looks like picket fence there. Little picket fence going on here. Excellent photos, Miss Biddle. And let's just blow up two of those and see what they look like uh, there. Pretty fantastic. Great work, Melinda. Thanks for sending them down. And this is from the just a coronal hole stream reaching Earth about four days ago. Beautiful shots. And we'll follow up on that space weather. This is the coronal hole here, Mark 10, that was responsible for that. And you can see we're dropping off back into geomagnetic calm here, KP2 and 3. We're bobbing between. Uh, the aurora is still lit up slightly there, but all is quiet on the western front, as you can see the X-ray flux here going down, down, down over the last three days. Some minor blips, but the sun is quiet. Now, this won't be for long because we've just entered up another peak, and here you can see the peaks. We've discussed them before. They're about monthly, and we just entered the peak, so it should last for several weeks. It'll drop down and we'll get another major peak. And so this activity will continue for about 10 more days and then it will all quiet down once again. So next 10 days, 14 days could be some active geomagnetic weather. So space weather, let's keep a close eye on it by tuning into the channel. Now rainwater, I'm sure many of you have seen this article. Everywhere on earth is absolutely unsafe to drink due to forever chemicals according to a new study. Now, per and polyfluoroalkali substances, often referred to as PFAS, are a large family of human-made chemicals that don't occur in nature. They are known as forever chemicals because they don't break down in the environment. They have non-stick or stain-repellent properties, so they can be found in household items like food packaging, electronics, cosmetics, and cookware. And now they're everywhere in the environment. Researchers at the University of Stockholm have found them in rainwater in most locations on the planet, including Antarctica. There is no safe space to escape them, and if you're going to rely on capturing rainwater, you're ultimately going to drink them, these forever chemicals. So, they're very bad. They are endocrine disruptors, and they cause a whole other plethora of harm, and this is the world that capitalism has created. It's kind of disgusting. Well, thank God our life is limited. <laughs> and I don't have to be around this uh, toxic waste heap for much longer. But as long as I'm here, I want to learn a little bit more science and a little bit more about what's going on. Now, dozens of articles have come out over the last 48 hours on unraveling the mysteries of gigantic jet lightning bursts that reach 50 miles into space. Take a look at that. This is the telescopes at Mauna Kea, sitting calmly at an altitude of around 4,200 meters beneath the sky filled with extraordinary light. Take a look at that. Now, we're going to do a complete expose tonight. Here's the paper. Came out on the 3rd of August. Upward propagation of gigantic jets revealed by 3D radio and optical mapping. Now, occasionally lightning will exit at the top of a thunderstorm and connect to the lower edge of space, forming a gigantic jet. 
And in this paper, they report on observations of a negative gigantic jet that transferred an extraordinary amount of charge between the troposphere and the ionosphere. And it occurred in unusual circumstances, emerging from an area of weak convection. Now, as the discharge ascended from the cloud tops, tens of very high frequency radio sources were detected from 22 to 45 kilometers in altitude. And this is um, a model of what's going on there in the upper positive charge here and the height. And there's the jet. So tune in tonight on Magnetic Reversal News for the full expose on what's going on here with our planet Earth. Now, most of you know we're in a magnetic excursion. Could be a magnetic reversal, but the odds are against that. But even magnetic excursions are extinction-level events. And there has been limited research done on the topic of what happens when the magnetic field changes to the biology around us, including plants. And this paper coming out 5th of August, Growth, Physiological, Biochemical, and Molecular Changes in Plants by Magnetic Field, a review. We'll leave you links below to all of the articles, so please dive in if you're interested. You can actually download the full PDF down here just by clicking download the PDF. But the geomagnetic field is an inescapable environmental factor for plants on Earth that affects all the growth and yield parameters. But both strong and weak magnetic fields, as compared to the geomagnetic field, can cause a specific role in plant growth and development. And this paper dives into that. And what they find is, well, conflicting evidence and information. Some species do well in low magnetic field, while others don't. Some species grow better in high uh, ge uh, magnetic fields, and others do not. So it, it, it's all across the board, and it's quite interesting. And that's part of the reason why these are evolutionary events. Some planet, plants go extinct, and other plants thrive. And new plants emerge. So this is just some of the science proving some of the things we've been saying for years. Now, don't miss the last supermoon of the year, the sturgeon moon, on Thursday. Hello, tomorrow. Named after the fish, the sturgeon, the sturgeon moon will coincide with the near peak of the Perseids as well. So those meteors will be washed out. But if the moon sets in time, maybe you'll see some bolides. Now, the full moon will be in Aquarius, which means it wants you to practice forgiveness. August 11th, Sturgeon Full Moon is the last of four supermoons of 2022. The other three were on May 16th, June 14th, and July 13th. And this means that the emotional energy will be more intense than usual because of the moon being in perigee which is its closest proximity to the Earth. And that makes us feel the lunar potency more as the moon appears bigger and brighter. Now, we've all heard of the full moon effect. Yes, there'll be more bank robberies, more murders and thefts and crazy things happening tomorrow and tomorrow night across the globe. And it's all thanks to the moon. And that's a boom. But before we go, we have a new partner, and it's Jace Medical. If you're looking for life-saving medications for your preparedness cabinet, and you don't want to go to your doctor, you don't want anyone to know, you can use our link at Jace Medical. Now, the Jace case is what every household needs. An emergency preparedness antibiotics case with a guidebook for their safe use. There are five emergency life-saving medications in here for wound infections, bioterrorism, including anthrax, pneumonia, bladder and kidney infections, and other diseases. They're all covered in the Jace case and the guidebook for their safe use. We're going to be doing a whole video on this, but if you need these now, click the link below and just go through the quick questionnaire and your Jace case will be in your house in just a few days. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. When things appear to be about to hit the fan, I hope you're getting ready. Thanks to all our one-time donors, our Patreons. Without our Patreons, we couldn't do it. 
We have some new Patreons, but we've lost 70 in the last year. It's because of the financial hit. It's because of the inflation. It's because of what's going on. We only ask those that can afford it to donate to the channel. So don't put yourself in a hole. We ask that all of you do what you need to do to prepare to survive and thrive for what's coming. Be safe. We love you. And that's boom.